Right now, Congress, you know, here's a, here, why don't we complete the trifecta? We are not addressing our bills nationally. And the latest uh, seems to be this effort to punt on, on apparently any attempt at budgetary reform or getting entitlements under control. And whether you're on the left or the right, is this just wrong? Let's ask former Mike Pence press secretary, Mark Lauder. Mark, good to have you. Great to have you. Hope to put you in a better mood. I don't know, Mark. <laughs> Did you know that 126 million people are going to be shopping tomorrow? Is your shopping done? Uh, it's done. I'm thankfully, uh, I'm going to avoid them all on the way home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, you know, talking about avoiding stuff, the rap against Congress, the rap against politicians on the right or left is they avoid making hard decisions. You can understand why, because they each catch all heck when they do. Uh, but apparently, uh, Mitch McConnell said we're not really going to be looking at entitlements next year. So that one's put off. Is that wise? Well, I know that, that that is something the president wants to address, and I think you, you see leadership in the House also wanting to address uh, entitlement reform. It's one of the best ways we have to, to control the federal deficit and spending that we've got going forward is we've got to get control of the spending. As, as you know, Neil, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about the tax reform, but when you go back and look at Reagan's tax cuts, revenue went up in eight of the ten years that followed. So the deficits that were caused were not revenue problems. They were spending you problems. You know, you're absolutely and right, that's why, but the, neither party does why it. We the time Republicans. when Republicans had that revenue coming in like crazy, and they did, they by and large spent every penny and then some that came in, a large for defense. You could make an argument at the time we needed to boost defense, but you can make an argument any time for any amount of spending. When do you think we'll get serious about this? I know they've teed up possible welfare reform. I guess that could happen, but what's your own gut tell you? I think they're going to handle it. I mean, remember, the president back in the spring put out a budget uh, blueprint that actually balanced the budget for the first time in many years uh, through the 10-year window. So we've got that. The House has passed the appropriations bills. If you really want to know where this is going to fall, this is going to be one of the issues that we're going to be talking about going into 2018. We need more Republican senators who are going to be fiscally responsible. It takes 60 votes to pass, to pass those appropriations bills, and uh, we're a few votes short there. So we're going to need more Republicans, not fewer, to get control of federal spending and finally get a, a handle on the debt. Yeah, you mentioned the president proposing a budget that got the budget in balance in 10 years. Now in the latest tax cut in order to sell that uh, and now the, the spending measure that was, uh, you know, agreed to, albeit on a temporary basis, to the middle of January, as you know, uh, we'll see 10 more trillion in debt added uh, to, to, to our burden uh, already. So I don't know if anyone is showing the will to address this uh, because they remember what happened before when Republicans were just trying to rein in the growth of Medicare, just the growth of it, just to curtail that increase. And uh, he was portrayed as throwing granny off a cliff and worse. What do you think? Yeah. No, it, you're absolutely right. And even when President George W. Bush attempted to uh, reform Social Security in his second term, and obviously that went nowhere. But here's one of the great things. And, and you know, I heard uh, Director Mulvaney of the OMB talk about this, is that we need to change the narrative in Washington and stop judging programs by how much we spend on them or how many people we serve. The success of our program should be judged on how few people need them and how little we have to spend on them. And that's one of the reasons why getting this economy going is so important. Important. It will put fewer people on the need for government uh, welfare and allow us to cut spending, reform the programs, because that's the only way we're going to get ourselves. We're going to grow ourselves out of it, but we out of the debt. But we also need to be more efficient. Um, does the vice president, I know when you work with him, he has been talking about just sticking to conservative principles and Republicans being proud about standing for those principles, whether uh, it involves the war on terror in places like Afghanistan, where he was this week. Uh, or on a tax agenda that, that tries to cut taxes for everybody. Um, is it your sense that that formula will be stressed a lot more than it was this past year? I do, especially as people start seeing the benefits of the tax reform and, and we continue to see the economic growth. And, and obviously, from a judge's standpoint, from rolling back regulations, I mean, this has been one of the most conservative first years in modern history in terms of action by the president. And you're going to see that continue. What we, what we have to do is be able to take that message to the American people in 2018 and tell them that the, if you want more of this, if you want to repeal and replace Obamacare, if you want more more re regulation reform. The answer is not more Democrats. The answer is more Republican leaders, especially in the Senate, but also in the House. Were you troubled then by, you know, the musings of Mitch McConnell, Mark, saying that there's a good shot we could lose 
one of these houses we control. Well, that's just history. Uh, I mean, every president except for George W. Bush the year after 9-11 has, has taken a significant hit in Congress in their first midterm elections, even going back through, through Reagan's time. So we're facing an uphill wind in terms of the historical precedent. But I think we've got the message on our side. We've got the recovery on our side. That's something that Reagan didn't have because the, the, re, the recovery back in the early 80s really started to take effect in, 2000, or in 1983 going into 1984. Uh, we've already got that wind at our back, so I think there's a good message to be made, but it's definitely going to be an uphill climb. Mark Lauder, good seeing you again. Thank you. Great to see you, Neil. All right. Uh